things I enjoy are the hacks. Anyways, I had, uh, a, you know, the comments from uh, Mistopheles. Uh, he calls himself Misto and, also a Greek uh, a Greek character as well so the, I would say that definitely the person is a comic book person although I wouldn't necessarily say he was uh, he could possibly be a Greek person and the camera staying in place that means our solution is working. And uh, so yay for that. I'm riding in traffic so this is a little bit more uh, Yeah. 
How was it felt? The Gnosis understanding is that there is more to the physical life than what we than, than than just this life here. So you have the physical life, you have our life, and then and through our reality, and then you have the reality of beyond the the, the spiritual reality, uh, the, the, the multiverse. And this is coming out in Spider-Man. It's coming with most of the kids' cartoons now. They talk about the multiverse. You talk about aliens traversing the multiverse, extraterrestrials. Well, this is uh, all comes from within Gnosis. The Hindus have an understanding of it, and depending on the depending on the god you attach yourself to, there are again a variety of different understandings within the Gnosis. And let's get into the whole thing. As it were, there are things that there are topics that are really forbidden to talk about, so you really don't get into any details. But there are ways of sort of indicating on how you can get into this. Well, if you go into history, you go into a number of history, you will find how does someone like Anthony Bourdain have strangulation marks around his neck, you know, in terms of hanging, but there's no place to hang from in the hotel room. The same thing with uh, King Spade. She apparently hung herself from a doorknob. How does that occur? And the same thing with Epstein. Well, if you go into history, not, uh, not too far into history, basically in uh, Great Britain and India, you will find history of a tribe called the Gurkhas. Study the Gurkhas and find out who they are. And they'll understand how someone can hang themselves. Even though there's no place to hang them. And you'll understand Epstein, you'll understand Anthony Bourdain, you'll understand Kate Spade, and you'll also understand the nature of the Gnostic path that most of the Democrat politicians are on with their left hand path. This means that they're openly working with demons. And in this case here, they said if you look at Palace, probably it might be they open in exchange for certain favors. Some of the things that are going on make start to make sense. However, if you have no understanding of it, then you're not going to understand it because a large
can't talk about this stuff without understanding notions. And this is where a large chunk of the people left the right to understand that this is where we get into the term sheep. Sheep does not necessarily mean people who simply follow in a herd. That's one definition of it. The higher definition, or the one that, that it sits in contextually, is the Gnostic one. The Gnostic one, the sheep, who are the common people, are the sacrifices. These are the people who are going to be sacrificed. And in other words, they're not special enough to be saved. So in any, in any particular case, in, incident, in, in any particular case, they need someone to sacrifice it, well, it's going to be one of the sheep. The question is, is how expendable are you? And this is where the this is where the whole thing comes into play. Is, is it, you know, it depends on who is viewed as expendable and who has the so-called gnostic powers. Oh, everything's holding. Everything seems to be held up. The camera holds up. That's what has been holding up. Uh, even with the bumps. So it is just about uh, a little after 21 hours into the 30th day of August. We're going to do the closing essay, uh, the, the second part of the essay that we came in for. This. Mirrors are holding up. So yay for everything. from the common to the uncommon. The common is sort of what people sort of experience at the sheeple level. This is the thing, what you experience often defines uh, where you are in a particular order or, or so on and so forth. Uh, basically, you have to be a bishop or above in order to understand the nosies that's behind. Uh, Roman Catholicism, same thing with the Protestants. Uh, there is a fair amount of gnosis in there as well. But they all end up on the same path where it's. The view from the outside is Christianity, but the view from the inside, from the very top levels, is gnosis particularly the paganistic gnosis, we're talking about 
but you have noses being defined in two fundamentally, two fundamentally different directions. And the most common, and that even the West is part of, is the pagan. And there is really no other religion that I can think of that is outside the pagan Gnostic sphere. It's a very large sphere. And the only one I know of that's outside of that is the Eastern Eastern Christianity, which is outside the, uh, the Gnostic pagan and has an entirely different relationship to God than anyone else does. And that's what happens. The, the Gnosis defines your relationship with God, the relationship with, with the beyond. Uh, that others, that, that uh, well, uh, that's how you determine your, 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 what your Gnosis is. Where you are in the Gnostic uh, sort of spectrum. So you have two fundamental, two fundamental de deviations. The Eastern Christian and the non-Eastern Christian. The non-Eastern Christian denotes the pagan, and everything, including Western Christianity, is within the pagan. And you'll find the commonalities of Gnosis with, within these fundamental definitions. Some movement of the uh, camera, but not much. I fixed it up. And then from the, 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 the pagan uh, perspective of Gnosis, there is a whole spectrum within that. So you begin with two fundamental deviations. The one that is pagan covers everything except for the Eastern Christianity. The Eastern Christianity remains a small sliver and has existed all the way, has existed all the way through. And there are ways to sort of see it, but it is the more complex. Uh, the one point you can take a look at is uh, St. Irenaeus. He wrote volumes on Gnosticism. Most of what you practice in yoga and a number of these gurus, they're all under the Gnostic area. They're all Gnostics. But they're primarily under the pagan Gnostics, even though they don't offer any particular religion. Their fundamental understandings, their descriptions are well within the Gnostic understanding that things are, in many cases, you know, we'll call loosey-goosey. In other words, a large chunk of the gurus are there to make you feel good. And they use this play of, oh, you gotta, you gotta, you, you gotta love yourself first. And they're going to show, tell you how to sort of become happy and the different things, different meditations uh, and different exercises that you can do to make yourself happy, to make yourself more happy. This Gnosticism is in the Gnosticism that is called left-hand path. Because the left-hand path which is defined within the Gnostic itself, the world tradition, is towards selfishness, things you do for yourself. The right-hand path, which is towards spirituality, towards a spiritual existence, towards heaven, is a selfless path. You don't do things for yourself, you do things for others. You become self-sacrificing. And this is what you would describe Christ as. Christ is a person, if you describe it as a person in these terms, 
fact, he would describe Christ as a right as the right hand man because he was selfless. It, it, but th this is where it sort of deviates because in the paganistic gnosis, which is everything else except for Eastern Christianity, Christ is simply an avatar of God. He's not God himself. However, in the Eastern Christian tradition, Christ is God himself. There is no separation, real separation, between God and Christ. Christ is God, and, he, and Christ is part of the Holy Trinity, one and inseparable. So he's, you know, the Holy Trinity, the Father, and Christ, as the Son of God, are all one. Now, this is something that, again, doesn't make sense if you use what we call logical thinking. This is where you'd have to bring in something along the lines of quantum mechanics to get some idea of, or some analog as to what, what's actually happening here. Well, in quantum physics, we see things, we can experience things, we can do things, so to speak. There you go, a bit of a knocking around. Much better than before, but still, there are some knocks that... <laughs> So in quantum mechanics, you can observe things in the physical universe that we see, we can measure some of their functions, but we fundamentally don't understand how they work. And I think it's part of, a, part of the, the construct of a physicist, physicist is to see things that we don't understand not develop the understanding, but develop an understanding. You approach the knowledge, you never simply achieve it. And this is something you have to live with as a physicist, that you're not going to ever achieve the knowledge. It's only going to be approached. And this is the same thing with the Holy Trinity. There is no knowledge of the Holy Trinity in terms of its entirety. You only approach it, you only have an understanding.